Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm talking about the Zwift companion app for pairing devices and how to minimize dropouts by making some changes to your router and to your phone. Let's dive right in to look at the router settings first. So the normal way you access your router control panel is 192.168.0.1 or 192.168.1.1 in a browser. I've already logged in, so let's get straight into it. You can see there in the middle, I've got the 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz frequency bands enabled. What you want to do is go over to the Wi-Fi settings and turn that off. The second thing we're going to do is media prioritization, also known as quality of service or packet shaping. What we're doing here is giving the computer you use for Zwift and your phone the highest priority use of the bandwidth within your house, your local network. You may have other people in your home watching Netflix or Disney Plus. You want to make sure that your computer gets the bandwidth first before they do. So find the name of the computer that you use for Zwift. Mine's conveniently called Zwift and put, whoops, pull it up into the high priority list. Then for the phone, we're going to configure an application. Uh, the drop down there just said add new application. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll call it companion. And the port range you want is 21587 to 21588. That has to be on the TCP protocol. Hit OK. I know that's correct because if we jump over to a log file, we have this line. Auxiliary controller attempting to connect a phone at my IP address 21588. That's the port. So we dialed it in. And bring that up into the high priority list as well. And now both the computer you use for Zwift and the phone has the first take on all the bandwidth in your house before everybody else and hit OK. Now for a super, super stable connection, you need to do this in all your neighbors' houses as well. So just have a party, get everyone around and tell them all to turn off 2.4. <laughs> Good luck with that. All right, let's jump over to the phone and I'll show you some tips, some changes you can make there to prioritize, well, optimize the Wi-Fi network and the Bluetooth connection. On the phone, we're going to make the Wi-Fi connection stable. Phones have this way of switching from Wi-Fi to cellular if the phone thinks that the Wi-Fi connectivity is poor. There it is. Leave that. Instead, go over to the companion app. So settings, search for companion. There it is. Then scroll down to cellular data and turn it off there. Next, fire up the companion app. Go into settings. You may have to scroll down. Then up to device connection and then turn on allowing Zwift to connect your Bluetooth devices. When using the companion app pairing, the Bluetooth signal goes from the power source to the phone, then it's forwarded to the computer via the Wi-Fi router. Now, if a connection drop happens, we need to figure out was it between one, two or three. We can eliminate three by hardwiring this, if you can. Now we need to figure out was it the connection to the phone or the phone's connection to the Wi-Fi router. A new chart in Zwiftalyzer can help you troubleshoot this step. If you see connection attempts at the bottom of the page, that means that this signal was lost and the computer tried to reconnect it. If you don't see any connection attempts at all in that chart at the bottom, then that is great. But it does mean that the dropout happened over on the left in signal path number one, back to Bluetooth. If that happens, Move your phone around until you get a better signal. Down here is really good, but unfortunately you can't see it. Just experiment and the left side usually works better because the trainer's uh, electronics are usually over on the non-drive side. Let's quickly look at how to pair devices in the right order. Fire up Zwift and choose pair through phone on the pairing screen. You'll see this notice about using the companion app to create a bridge and that's great. That's exactly what we want. Now, first go into the power source. There's an odd thing here. I'm going to choose my Duretto first because I want to use it as a resistance. But oddly, if I have to choose it here as the power source to be able to see the resistance, then, wait a second, there is Duretto's there, choose that. But what I really want on my power source, if I go back to that one, are my Asioma pedals also there, last but one. Now I'm all set. 
Oh, yeah, one more thing. Let's get the cadence from the Asiomas as well. And you see that's got the phone icon next to it as well. So confirming that it is, in fact, pairing through the companion app. So I've got three devices there, all set. Back in the companion app, keep an eye on the top right corner. See that Bluetooth icon with a warning on it? If you click on that, it'll tell you exactly which device has the dropout. As far as I know, you can't get that information anywhere else in Zwift. If you're still having connectivity issues, try this app called Track It. It's designed for finding lost earbuds, but you can use it to get the signal strength from all your devices. So the way I would advise using this is position your phone so you get the best signal strength from your power source. To sum up, disable 2.4 GHz, hardwire the PC network, prioritize traffic, disable cellular, put the phone in direct line of sight to the devices and use track it to measure the device signal strength. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope these tips have given you ideas for how you can eliminate dropouts with your setup. Let me know in the comments below if it has helped you out. Stay tuned for some videos coming up soon about Bluetooth on PC. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Have a wonderful day and hope to see you soon.